All right. All right. Let's stir a little shit today. How about it? What do you say? Sex on the first date, ladies. I'm going to tell you why you should be doing that, particularly if you're an older woman. If you're in the dating market, there has been this known three-date rule set probably for the last 25 years, maybe longer. And that's been out there, and both the men and the women understand it. And it is, it's got to take me on three dates before I have sex. And, okay, fair enough. And, if, especially if the guy's paying for all this spending all the time, he's expecting something. Let's not beat around the bush. Why is he dating you in the first place? Well, he's dating you in the first place because you look pretty. He's interested in you sexually. Let's don't beat around the bush. Let me just thrust a spear right into the heart of the bullshit that's put out there by women saying, Oh, no, I want somebody with intelligent conversation, all of these things, and they expect the man to do exactly the same back to them and say, Oh, I am more than just my sex. When it first starts, it is just sex, ladies. Men, we already know it. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. And so... With the younger women under 30, it seems to be they kind of get it because they have a lot of options. Things are going on. They either reject fast or they play a little bit and then they move on. Or maybe you're lucky every once in a while. Now, when it comes to a woman in her 30s, and I always, I always act like I'm getting after the 35-year-old, the 50-year-old women. But the problem is, is you've already done a lot of this first date sex. I, you know, I'm out there. You know, trying to find myself. We all know that's a euphemism for you wanting to explore your sexuality. That's great. Most sex for, for women with average men is, is pretty freaking horrendous. Uh, most men don't know how to be competent in the bedroom. And that's, that's unfortunate, but that's the way it is right now. And there are those of us that are trying to correct it. But that's neither here nor there other than... If you're going to have a good relationship and you want a long-term relationship out of it and not just, you know, a kind of a casual sex, hookup culture sort of thing, which is perfectly fine in my opinion. It's just very few men are even play in that arena. It's really open to women and, and, and only open to an extremely small percentage of men. Uh, so let's talk about most of us. For, for women that are past the wall in that age range, They've had every opportunity sexually that you can imagine. And so they're at the point in their life, look, I've had all of these things. I would want something more. What they're feeling is that desire for a long-term relationship that actually offers some fulfillment. Women will say it makes me happy, but it's actually fulfillment of fulfilling her biological uh, imperative of procreation. And the best way to do it is by pairing up and having a father involved. At least that's what's driving it. So what she's thinking at that point is, I got to look at the other qualities now because I don't have much time. Sex is easy for me. So why bother? Let's make a man jump through the hoops and see what he's got to offer because I've been around and I've been offering sex up to these men that I want but they're not going very far with me or I am rejecting them for want to find myself. I'll say this to all of them and it'll piss you off. That guy that you wanted to spend your life with, he's been in your life probably more than once. That's just a fact. There is no soulmate. The problem with it that you're facing is that you think that the sex is easy for men and so they should look beyond that. Men cannot look beyond that. So making a man wait for sex is never, ever worth the wait. You want a long-term relationship? Let me, let me spell it out to you. You want a successful one? I've been in one for over 30 years. The sex has to be on par. It's got to be incredible and passionate beyond what you can imagine. Now, it doesn't have to start out that way, but you've got to have similar libidos. And if it's not similar, you're not going to grow into it. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. And you got, now, it can all be expanded, but it's got to be similar to start. And you've got to be able to be willing to 
work with each other to get to that real passionate level. And you need to get there as fast as possible. Why do I say this? Because when you have that really good passionate sex, you can't keep your hands off of each other. That is the glue that holds a relationship together and it smooths over a lot of the little petty shit that you'll blow into an incredible nightmare of an argument. It really does because there's actual physiology that exists. And I'm not gonna go into the details here. You can find it behind the paywall or you can find it somewhere else that a woman's brain chemistry changes rapidly with an orgasm and arousal to the point where it lasts for hours and even up to days from having this quality, passionate sex life. It's pretty amazing. There's even studies out there that show that the more frequent the sex, on average, the longer you live and the rest of it's bullshit. Look it up, you can find studies either way, but I do believe the one that was done out of Australia and East Asia. So you can look that up too, I'm not gonna give you the link, I don't really give a shit. Um, because if it works for me, that's good enough. So back to this passionate sex. Are you gonna wait five, six, seven dates? I know somebody that waited a year. A year of dating weekly to have sex. Well, the sex wasn't that good. Well, fuck no, it wasn't that good after all that. Can you imagine the anticipation on both sides at that point? I mean, I'm sure both sides have evaluated this. Now these people are in their 50s and they evaluated this, they think they're doing it right, they're, they're going to church and it should be this way, this way, that way. And both of them are not virgins. So they have a good idea what good sex is. So they build it up in their head. A year later it happens. Talk about rejection and disappointment. Are you kidding me? They would have never won in that situation, neither one. So what are you saying, Thor? Here's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying you gotta get to that sex as quick as possible. Do better screening before you commit to the date, ladies. If that guy's even a possibility, you need to be prepared to find out very quickly if he has the same libido as you and if he can have good sex with you and actually reach a satisfying point. He might have to have sex more than once or twice, okay, if you want a long-term relationship. Now, here's the kicker. Once you do that, you have to add more value than just the sex because that's what you want. You want more value than just the sex. You even ask the men, well, well, men just want sex. That's all they want. What else do they bring? They bring a lot. But you got to realize that asking a man to defer his sexuality is like asking asking a guy that is is loves Kentucky Fried Chicken and is going to Kentucky Fried Chicken. He shows up and they say, you can only order nachos. We're not getting you the chicken. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to work, girl. He's going to go to another restaurant and get some fucking chicken. He's not going to eat your nachos. Can I eat your crappy nachos if that's what you do? Men want the sex. Once that's out of the way, both his brain chemistry and your brain chemistry is in a spot where you can actually express value to each other. You can bring added value. And that's where the heart of the relationship is. So sex is the tool and it's the glue that integrates all the rest together. This is just how it is with men and women. Think I'm wrong? Check it out. Go and look, find out. Ladies, if you're over 35 and you can't find the guy you want, it's because you're looking for the wrong guys. There's plenty of those guys, they're in your past. You need to look at guys that are acceptable, not the exception. If they're acceptable, you need to find out if they can become the exception. They just won't come that way out of the box. No one does. And you're lying to yourself if you think you did. And you fooled yourself because when we were young and beautiful, it seemed like that exception threw a ton of attention at you. And where did it go now? Why is it any different now? I understand that. That's our nature to think that the way things are are the way things always will be. And for you, it is not the case. And if you don't fix it and fix it soon, you will not have that fulfillment and you'll have a lot of nights of misery, whining, and snuggling your cat or your dog, which by the way, dogs are great. No worries there. But um, yeah, if you're dating a guy and you've done your vetting properly, you wanna know more about that? 
join RP Thor's uh, membership on YouTube. It's the only spot where I will make private videos and I'll talk a little bit more about that, even for the ladies themselves, what they can do to give added value when they want to acquire a long-term relationship. And this goes for, for ladies that already are in a long-term relationship because adding value is always important. Think of it this way. The women that give more get the most from men. It's a fact of life. You don't have to like it. You might want to reject it. If you do, good for you. But if you don't, you will live the dream. And who doesn't want to live the dream? I'm Thor. Skull.